Hello everyone, my name is Kist and welcome back to another episode of Track Calling 101. Today, we're going to be building the ultimate yard. Let's do it. Here she is. Here's the yard we're going to build today. Now, this may just look like a bunch of lines to you guys, but I'm going to walk you through what I have here. So in black is our main line, everything current, basically. We have our lines for the free depot, the ones we built south last time, and then our existing line here. Now, there is some kind of color coding to this, and let me walk you through. So in green is we have our outbound yard, and we have our inbound yard, okay? Anything in gray is just connecting tracks, tracks that will allow us to get through the yard and just around the yard. In blue, will be the hump yard tracks. It's where um, you're gonna go to enter the hump and just be able to you know do things. And this what the little pink arrow is here is the actual hump that which is in orange here. And then again these gray lines are there so they to connect into it so you'll be able to kind of just be able to get in and out of places where you need to. The purple is just extra track. Kind of like I'm calling it my exterior track that's what it is. Um, again, this little line here is for staging, so if I wanted to load the hump, I can back out and just stage my train first. There's a lot going on, I'm really excited to actually put it, and that's right. One other thing here is the roundhouse. I can't wait to build it and show you guys. Uh, let's just get back into Rhodes Online and start doing it. So the first thing we actually need to do when building this yard is kind of take a principle from engineering. Defining your variables. Now, what that entails is basically trying to understand what you're given and what you can work with. So another good word for it is your constraints before you can actually build. Now, the constraint for this area is this hill here and kind of similar place, this part of the hill here. Now, why is that the constraint? Well, the terrain starts to go up here and standing on this side so our yard can only be as wide as these two pieces will let us now it's easiest to build on alignment 90 or alignment 270 either or but what we have to do first is make sure we're on a completely or relatively flat ground compared and so now if i just hold a piece out what we're looking for is when will it like basically fill this hill. So I'm just gonna see how close I can get to the hill, basically. So you can start to see, it's getting really close now here. I wonder to do a little, kinda something funky. Okay, so here it's too close. Okay, we're just gonna go with the original idea. Let's just do two 90s and get one track closer. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna try one more thing to see if I can get a little bit extra width. I wonder, I wanna know if this will work or not. Yeah, um, I'm looking at it. I think that looks pretty good. So, um, how do I actually get this spacing? It's kinda winging it. Um, the best thing to do is make sure your alignment is on 90. And again, alignment you can find right there, 90 degrees, and that should be in line with the freight depot. But it's kind of guesstimated it to see where it could, like where I could place it. And then you just want to see how close you can get. I just use crossovers, or in this case, I use the mainline spacing to get the horizontal side to side. Now, um, we're actually not going to worry about the spacing, you know, over there because we can just start building our yard from this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do maybe like 110 meter pieces. Okay. So I'm about to place the last segment, and I'm going to try to make it in line here. But I wanted to show you something. 
why do I like grid one the most? What, or actually, I should probably explain the difference. What is the difference between each of the grids? So grid 100 is, or the grid goes by centimeters, okay? So if you know your metric system, 100 centimeters is a meter. So right now the track is moving by one meter increments. If I hit shift, I'm gonna go to 50. It's gonna go to 50 centimeters, half a meter. You can see it moves quicker side to side. Now, if I go to 10, now it's 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters along. And if I go to grid one, this is one centimeter. It moves ever so slightly like stuttering, but it's a lot smoother now. You can kind of think of it as like frames per second, but also notice the length. So I want to give us a 30.1. Now if I hit grid, 100, so 31.1, 32.1, okay. Whoa, what? Did you see that? So 31.3, 32.3, 32 32.6. Huh. So there actually is a discrepancy, some kind of mistake between the grid alignment. So I'm on grid 50. Now I'm at grid one. Okay, grid 10. Grid 50, grid 100, but wait. <laughs> so grid one is gonna be your most accurate to get the specific lengths you need. It can it can be nice to use the other lengths just to kinda maybe build longer pieces, but grid one is gonna be your most accurate. And ta-da, we have our little double main line, but we're not stopping here. The kind of the problem with this is how do you actually connect up everything? So before I actually build the entrance to the yard, I need to build the Y's at, at both ends to give me the proper spacing I need. And that's going to require me to rework the entire sawmill entrance for the second time. And I'm not going to show this one because I we can't afford to lose any more time. So I'm going to cut back and this is going to be done. And we are done with this Y. So the only change I actually had to do was how I, I would say, get to the sawmill. The first time it graded, graded, graded up from here, but I didn't really want to do that anymore, um, just to keep it level. However, I didn't like how it had this giant amount of ground fill, so I, had to, I decided to curve it left so it stays on the ridge, if you will. And I decided to place the second switch kind of at a weird angle. But this time, it actually kind of is the best of both worlds. It curves left, it angles this way pretty good, and it allows us to keep a nice curve up into where we left. I kept our switch and everything else the same up here, but now to actually how we actually get to it is different. And I think while I'm here, this actually poses a good thing to show real quickly. So in cases like this, where you have some kind of awkward amount of fill, but you like the spacing here, but you don't like the spacing on the other end. Well, I'm gonna place a secondary spline here. I'm gonna try to find the radius as best I can, the average radius. This isn't gonna really be perfect, but the average radius is what I need. So it looks like 193, and now I'm gonna grade up. Looks like half a percent overall. Okay, great. So it starts out at 193. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this piece out until it but it's not even that, it's kind of like somewhat less than. So right about here is where it gets even with it, okay? So I'm gonna try my best to actually find a better curve for this. It's around 207, great. So I'm gonna drag this back out probably until it got level with it. Yeah, this is like the entire curve, this isn't working. So. Change of plan. Instead of grading up there, I'm gonna just keep it level for now. Now, I'm gonna grade up. Well, let's do 37 meters, I think. This isn't like too bad. And now, from here, I'm just gonna use a stone wall. That's it. It's like, if you have some kind of awkward amount of fill that you don't like, just just don't don't use it. That's That's, that's the advice. Wow, Kist, that's, that's so insightful. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know. But this way, it just kind of, I don't know. It, it breaks it up so we're not looking at some giant fill. I could put a bridge there. Air quotes here. Could put a bridge there. But, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. All right. So now let's have to get to the main part of this video, the yard. So to actually build the yard, I'm going to really encourage you to go check out a video. This is by the creator Dubai Trains, titled Railroad Yards Explained, with over 25 yard track plans and every detail explained. This, that video, is really great just for checking out or trying to understand the different types of rail yards and their functions. And the main thing with every rail yard that I found out was that it needs an inbound, an out, or it just needs a yard for trains to come into and leave from, and it needs some kind of classification, some kind of sorting aspect of it. Now, if that's a separate tree yard or if it's just two tracks for switching, so be it. But we have our main storage and then sorting aspect of a yard. And this is where this is gonna come into play here. From the tracks we just built, this will be our inbound yard. So the first thing we need to do is build a yard lead. Now, as the name suggests, the yard, this track will be leading into our main yard. And one thing I designed in my plan was an extra track here. What I'm doing is I'm just building a switch. So if I ever need to build a, tr a track or build a train out, I guess, like I'm trying to sort a train and build it farther out. I am putting an extra track here so I don't conflict the main line and I can just sort my trains this way. And this is just basically gonna run parallel and follow our existing track. And I'm gonna do like a, ooh, I don't know. Let's do 300, 300 meter radius, like this. So now I have a really long piece of track and I can't forget the bumper. I'll do one little thing. This is my little trick to kind of make the end of track devices look pretty cool. Uh, Ta-da! Kind of looks like an anchor piece and also just visually it's how we can tell um, where the track ends. But anywho, now I have this really long piece of track that I'll be able to build trains out of that I won't have to foul the main line. So this is going to be my yard lead. It's very short, I know, but we don't have a lot of space so I need to make the, the, the best use of it. Now from here, just for clarity's sake, I am going to start the yard here. So um, I'm thinking maybe seven tracks or maybe six, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, we'll do six. I'm not going to add a seven, a seventh one. Now, how much, how long are these going to be? Well. Uh, a yard is only as limiting as its shortest track is. I'll say that again. A yard is as limiting as its shortest track is. So the best thing to do is start from the shortest track. This guy, number six. The question of how long I'm going to make it is depending on my need. Now this just comes down to preference, and I'm going to use my preference here. Whenever I run trains, I like to run 16 car consists. So that's an engine, 16 cars, and a caboose. We wouldn't necessarily call the caboose part of a train, I guess. it's The caboose's role is to signal the end of a train. And so I'm only going to focus on the actual cars, not the engine, not the caboose, just the cars. And I did the math here, and I kind of tested this. For To fit 16 cars, you need 132 meters. Now, it's more like 130, really, to fit them, but I'm giving just myself just that little bit of extra room. It's more likely going to be like 15 cars because I, I understand cars are going to only be so long. So if I have it perfectly fit, it's going to block this track here. Okay. Now, there's two ways we can do, build a yard. We can build it like this, kind of a more of a trapezoid shape. Or we can build it, we can build it like this. as kind of like a rhombus, some kind of parallelogram. I'm not as big of a fan as this one. For the, at least in this case. I've used it plenty of times before, but for this case, we're not going to use it. Um, on this side, we just got to place six switches. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we are lined up there. Ooh, wait. I'm thinking. I'm debating whether or not placing a switch. 
this way instead. Um, can I, I have a few different thoughts. I figured it out. We're going to do this just like on the other side. Or not. We're going to do this just like on the other side. And then it should have been one, two, three into a switch. Ta-da! Trying to keep everything symmetrical. So I can get rid of this guy, I can get rid of that guy. And here we go. Now, let's say the actual yard is completed. So building a yard on a curve is a little bit harder, but basically, um, actually you'll see when we get there, but building a yard on a curve in terms of the entrances and exits, it, it's easier to build on straight, I would say, just because you can make things symmetrical, or it's easier to make things symmetrical, more like. And now the easy part is just connecting these to the other switches. All right, so we got our first yard done, and now we can kind of clearly see a separation from the main lines and our yard. This is just visually, so we can kind of decipher the two. If I just have a bunch of tracks next to each other, it's kind of like, okay, which one's the yard, which one's the main line, which one's the yard, which one's the main line. So at least here, now we have a clear separation between what is going on. And again, we have our, I want to say, staging track here, so we can build trains instead of fouling the main line. Now let's have to get to the nitty gritty, the rest of it, I guess. So one thing to keep in mind is also the, like, I want to say the flow of the art. It's, it's going to be very inefficient if stuff has to wait to do things, but it's also very inefficient if you had to go, like, do m multiple detours to get to places. So this is not an actual, you know, storage track, but this is going to be for our trains to actually move and do things. But I'm looking at it now trying to gauge my spacing, I think I'm going to do it, is I am going to place a crossover to give it just a little bit of sectionality, just so we can clearly see which track is which in their function. Now that we have that in place, we got to talk about the actual hump yard. So I'm looking at my design, and it seems like I placed the switch after instead of before. I think I'm going to do that here too. So this will actually be the start of our hump yard, or the actual hump, if you will. We have plenty of space, so I'm not too worried about it. But we kind of run into a design problem here. It's how do I actually know how far out I can go. Well, before you even actually do any of that stuff, we need to go figure out our spacing for this. And this is where the freight depot comes into play. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna constraint the yard to these tracks. These tracks are going to be the main line. Now, 110, don't go crazy here. The reason I am building um, 110 meter, just shorter segments instead of just one giant one, is in case I need to delete it. It's like I'm probably going to put a Y in here, so I need to be able to delete tracks that's not super long so I can play switches and do all the fun stuff. But this one's really easy. We're just going to drag this out for a little bit. But I'm looking at it now that if it keeps going out, it's gonna hit that hill. So it might be a good idea to turn a little bit. Let's do 300. That should be good. I lied. 600 was better. So here, real quickly before anything else, I wanna get my spacer. I guess that's kind of important. I should probably talk about that. So, when it comes to building a double main line and you have to curve a piece of track, it's better to build like two straight segments or build one curve first and then get your spacings on both sides. So now we're going to go back over here. We did, I think, four 110 meter segments. So just build that first segment and we have the spacing on the other side. So now that we have these two kind of connecting pieces, we can just connect them. And the reason I curved it a little bit is to make sure um, I don't hit that hill right here. So now we got this, we can just build out. Isn't she purdy? It's also a little bit realistic too in a sense that not everything's perfectly straight. And so we have a little bit of variety to at least, I want to say break it up. It's not ridiculous, it doesn't hit that hill or 
also set this up down here. Now you may ask yourself, or you may be asking me, well, why aren't you? Why isn't it closer? You had plenty of space. Why don't you bring it closer to that hill? Well, this is where the outbound yard is gonna go. And so now that we have our spacing here, in terms of side to side, we actually have a lot of room to work with. And I'm kind of judging it real quickly. I have roads extended open on the other tab about where I want to start this. Yeah, I think around here would be good to start it. So I'm actually going to place a reference bit. And this is just for me to get my spacings. We'll do 18. Eh, close enough. Now I'm going to back it up by two switch placements. You may, you may think that's kind of dumb. Like I probably don't need to do that, but... Let me tell you, this type of difference is what makes or breaks functionality. Now that we have our yard spacing or yard lead, huh, not gonna worry about it. Ta-da. Now, same thing on this side, we're gonna do one, two, three, switch facing here and then straight out. And so when I build my outbound trains, I can you know, stage them here or put them on the yard lead and again stage them before or without fouling the main line. Ta-da! And this is all going to be like kind of temporary. We're workshopping this. So now for the outbound yard. The outbound yard has a little bit of a different functionality than the inbound yard. The final, the final train, whatever that we're going to build, whatever we're going to use, is going to be put here. It's not where this is going to be sorted, it's, it's where it's going to be constructed. It's, it's not going to be sorted here, but it's going to be constructed. And if, if any of my you know, my viewers are engineers, feel free to correct, correct me on this. But we're going to be building in a yard that's less tracks and longer. So I'm going to do five instead of six. One, two, three, four, five. From here, we did 130 meters on the other side. What instead I'm going to do is I'm going to do around 160. I think that will prove to be very nice for what we need. And there is a reason for this this time. It's because instead of doing our trapezoid, we are going to do a rhombus for this yard. The actual spacing, well, I want to explain something very, very specific about switches. Switches have directions. The direction of the switch is from the stand. This is forward on a switch. And this is backwards, and this is to the right or to the left. However, the turnout is always going to be shorter than the, the straight piece. It's I, don't ask me why. It's just how this this switch is designed. It's the switch where this will always be shorter than here. You may think, oh well, this is the same distance from this side to here as it is from the straight piece here. The answer is no. They are it's slightly shorter on the turnout. Now, why is this important? Well, if I do a track spacing like this, now I'm going to do the same thing, but from the start. Would you look at that? It is inaccurate. They do not line up. This is very important. If you ever wonder, why isn't my track lining up? Oh, I, I placed a switch like this side. Why is it different? This is why. The switches are shorter, they're, they're, they're not perfect, they're not symmetrical. So, you just have to keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to this tile yard, thankfully, I don't have to change anything. One, two, three, four, five. For this one though, I'm actually going to do probably this. Just so, I can, just so I can have some kind of track that goes out. These ones though, we can just connect, so let's do that. So now you can see this guy's a little weird. It's obviously displaced. So the question is, do I want to do it? I think not. And here's why. I think it would be better to keep the yard separate or try to use this as a passing track. If I wanted an extra passing track, I would add, you know, an extra switch to do it. So for this purpose, I'm just going to keep this a yard track. Ta-da! Now we have our outbound yard. And so trains or cars will be coming from the hump yard to be sorted and assembled here 
and we can use our, I want to say staging track to build the trains, pull them out without getting onto the main line, keeping it clear. All for functionality purpose. Now that we have, or now that we have that in place, we can build our exterior tracks, anything extra. So I decided yes, we're, we're, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do our classic mainline spacing. However, I'm gonna put a switch here. So now I should be able to get rid of this guy. Ta-da, yay. Now you might see me do that. It's like whenever you look at a switch, for whatever reason, it just keeps it there. So I just like either press V or press G real quickly to get rid of it. But just like on the other side, we have a clear visualization or a clear separation between the main lines and then the yard. We also have a lot of extra space now over here. So, okay, so now what are we gonna do here? Well, in my original design, actually I need to put that thing there, don't I? Let's see if this connects. Uh-oh, it does not. This poses a good opportunity to show something. So because of the switches and like how, how they work, we have a discrepancy between lining things up. Now this is better, but it's not gonna be perfect. You can see here that it's just, it's just not exactly lined up. It's very close, but it's not close enough. So the question is, how do I fix it? Well, the reason it's like this is because of this track. So the way I actually fix it is by taking a piece from wherever, and you're gonna go slightly into the switch. You're gonna push it out. Now we have a little bit here and don't be afraid. It's like, oh, it, it, it's only a little bit. So I only need to do, you know, a, a little bit forward. Nope, you can actually probably go twice the distance. So I'm thinking this much. Now, if I place a switch, what, this way? See, it got a lot closer, but it's still off. So I'm gonna delete this and even go further. This time, not as much. I did like about this last time. So I'm only gonna go about, yeah, let's do that yeah, and see what happens. We can get it better, we can get it more exact. I'll take it. What we can do now is just replace this switch. Ta-da. So now again, we have a little bit of a separation between the actual yard and I'm gonna say this exterior track. I don't think, I think it just looks like it. It looks like it's wider here than it is on that side. And it, it's not, it should be roughly parallel. But yeah, I think it's looking good. So now the next thing we need to do is actually connect these two. And just out of curiosity, I'm not going to do any circle mode, I'm just going to connect. I'm going to look at the roads extended real quickly. This is what the yard is starting to look like, everybody, just so we can kind of give some context. But that was the piece I just placed. It looks rather, rather good. I think I'm actually going to keep that, but I'm going to break it up into multiple segments. Yeah, I'm actually a really big fan of this a lot. Looks pretty symmetrical, it doesn't look too bad. So let's go back and break it up real quickly. Okay, there we go. So yeah, this is just kind of like, again, um, tracks that you get around the yard. And what we're gonna put here is another Y. And debating whether to wait on to do this or just do it now and get it over with. I'm thinking that one. So how do you build a Y? And more importantly, how do you build a double track Y? Well, I'm glad you asked, Kiss. You're welcome. It's actually, it's actually rather simple. And I think it'd be better to actually show it on roads extended than it will be to show it in game. Yeah. First things first is that we actually need to build the crossovers. You can't do anything in the game without, you know, or you can't really go anywhere unless you can actually get to where you're going. But by doing this, it, it actually helps kind of, I want to say, build the track for us. I think that's the word I'm looking for. I'm actually going to, I'm going to change it here. I'm going to do a switch this way reason for it is so the, the radius will be a little bit better yeah um now i just got that in place i was gonna say it's like you may you, you probably will never like i'm saying you haven't or you probably just wouldn't think about it normally it's like you build crossovers one way and you're like oh this works why change it but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of like variation to it so i'm not doing some kind of crazy curve now we'll have a, like a, just a smooth flowing curve I'm more worried about this one here, but I think we have plenty of distance to not worry about it. So first things first is I'm not even going to do anything else except make a hundred meter piece first. Oh, and the other way. Let's do, um, let's do 12. I think we have enough space. 
So now I'm gonna go straight to uh, maybe 60, let's see. Okay, so I have a lot more space I can work with. Maybe 70. Let's see what happens if I go to 100. So this is just a temporary piece because I'm trying to figure out like, how far out do I need to go to place a switch. That's the current thing. Uh, now that I got my spacing, there you go. I'm gonna go to see where I can place a switch. So uh, let me explain my kind of thought process for building a Y here. All a Y is, I want to say it's like cutting out a square. That's the best way I can put it. If I can put a maybe like a graphic or some kind of picture to show you what I mean, I'm gonna definitely do that. Now, what the heck do I actually mean by that? Well, when you have a Y, most of the time it's gonna be perpendicular, which means it's gonna make like a T. Yeah, the angle between both the tracks, the top track and then the one cutting it in half, is gonna make two 90 degree angles on it. Now that said, okay, well how do you actually, I wanna say, like make it equidistant, how do you actually get that right angle? Well, if we're thinking, if we're thinking a really nice T, a T is gonna be a square. It's gonna be equal on all sides. So if I say have 100 meters on the top, then my bottom piece is gonna be 100 meters as well. Now this said, what you can do is you can just connect the corners. You can do left to middle and then um, right to middle. And it should roughly kind of make a smooth corner. Doesn't look awful, but I want it to be better. I could have just done this from this side and called it good, but... Ta-da! Now I have one corner, the acute corner, and then we have the obtuse segment. Oh, okay. It's a little too much. There you go, much better, much better, much better. You know, a fun fact about me is in high school, I studied, um, how to fly drones and we had to go through um, aviation studying like reading charts and doing a lot of stuff I'm sure if one of my friends watches this from high school he'll probably scold me on for how I didn't follow through follow through with that class because I'm a train boy instead of an airplane boy but one thing we were talking about with like, in return like guards or with regard to flight training is you want to make small movements kind of like in driving too when you're driving a car it's like you never want to make big, giant, sudden moves. You want to do sudden, small, detailed, and refined moves. And that's also the, kind of the same thing here, is you never want to, I want to say, overcompensate and make a big change, make a big uh, adjustment. So you always want to do smaller adjustments so you can be safe. Now I'm realizing I placed the switch on the, or the stand on the wrong side, so time to fix that yet. And ta-da! We have a Y in place. Yay. So, now that we got that done, it's time to do the actual hump yard. Well, this wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a, a day or two since I built that Y, and the coal update is here. It's, today's Friday as I'm recording this right now. And, yeah, it, it, things finally happened. We're in spring. The trees are still the same, and... Well, obviously you probably can't tell here, but we got a lot of new things this update. I did a whole video going into it, but I'll show again if you haven't seen it. We have new engines. We have the Mason Bogey here. The Ruby Basin here. We have the Coal variant on the Cook 260. And lastly, we have the Eastern Tennessee in West North Carolina 280. And this thing is a beast. But... We got um, those new engines and a few new cars, but one thing, since we're in track lane 101, is we got this. We got a three-way stub switch. This is gonna be awesome. And it's like, it's perfect, we're building a yard. I actually, I actually think we can, we might have a place for this, you know, now, and this is, this is just the perfect timing. And then there's a variant with the switch stand on the left, but Dude, it's like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be awesome. I'm so excited. The other things we got is we got some new facilities. 
We got snow sheds. And basically what a snow shed is, it's literally just this, you know? It's a shed, it's an open building, no doors, that you can store stuff in. The, the locomotive shed is, is that. It's made for locomotives to be make sure they're a little taut, or um, more secure, I should say. The engine shed is more reminiscent of using it like cars or putting equipment underneath it. And it can also be called a snow shed because it's there to protect stuff from having a lot of snow onto it. We got a few new water towers, this update. And we also have a coaling tower. Now I have no idea why it's offset. I guess it's supposed to be like you're placing it on track like this. I, I, I don't know. It has this reel here to dump the coal into it. And yeah, it's just, we had a lot of new things this update. But we can't, I say, worry too much, or we can't waste too much time because we need to finish the yard. The thing I was going to work on now is the hump yard. And what does that entail? Well, remember that a hump yard um, needs to have a hill. It needs to hill up. And then it's going to have a sharp drop down. Locomotives will probably never go down the hump, but they will definitely push cars up it. And, um,. Do other things. Now what I'm doing is just getting myself some fast sprint real quickly and we're actually gonna build the yard. Okay so I just spent a little time looking at my plans that I drew out and I think what we need to do to kind of help it is build it from our inbound yard. This because we we have an angle so to kind of get every the, the curves right to make sure they're parallel with the yard be too hard to start from over there on the other side so I think we need to get our horizontal side to side spacing first and reference back I'm just turn to look at my drawing um, I have a track like the I'm gonna say the border track goes straight out from here it's gonna curve to our left eventually but um, this is where the hump yard will also tie into so I now I'm thinking about it I think as kind of like as a, as a rough sketch, I need to build the almost um, the ring track. I, I don't know how else to call it. Basically, my outline track for the yard. So I'm just gonna speed through it real quickly and just get an exterior track done. All right, after kind of a, a couple of minutes, so I can kind of just do a little bit of building. I got my second piece of track in. Now it will be our limiting. This is going to be how wide the yard is going to, or this is going to be how wide the yard is. Now that said, what's going on over here? This is my, this crossover was like the corner of my testing or experimenting, experimenting. Now what is this? Well, I did build a loop here in this area to see how I liked it. Um, kind of more attuned to what I drew, but I might be changing the final design depending on how well this goes. And I, I basically just figured out the right size of the loop I wanted and this point marked where I wanted to start it. So, um, staying true to my design, I will be putting a switch here before the curve starts. And this will head over for the hump yard. Now, I'm just gonna, just gonna connect this back up real quickly. But I want to drag out a piece, just, just naturally, and see how far it comes out and how much room do I actually have. Meh. Very mid about this. Now, what do I mean? Well, um, I think it'd be better to switch out once like this and follow this curve instead. I'm trying to look at my design as best I can. I think I like this idea more. Now, actually curving back in for a second. I think this is now parallel with the other tracks. Oh! Yes, so there is a new glitch that happened in this update where the angle, so the grid, look at this, it's, it won't snap to the correct direction anymore. So how do you fix this? Well, first you just you know line it up roughly in that direction and it should snap. That, that is all. That's all it takes. Seems 90 to me. I'm going to trust it and say that it is 90 degrees. Okay. So here, I guess that we'll build, we'll start the hump yard here. And I'm just double checking to make sure. Do I like the the spacing? Do I like this? I'm gonna say yes, 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 I do. Okay, the actual hump yard. 
Dum bum bum. The first thing we're gonna do is I think we're gonna use our stub switch first to actually mark the yard. Now why? Well, from here we can keep it a well, one track symmetry like this. Now I'm assuming that they worked out the angles to be parallel with each other here and here. And that's what it seems like to me. But now we have a single point of convergence for the yard. And this will prove very nicely for symmetry's sake, and that's what we're going to do. We don't have to do any weird um, tricks anymore. So I'm going to keep it an odd number yard. Now with this, um, we do want it to curve to the right. We also want it to curve either to the left or go straight to me our roundhouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect back up to this switch placement I had. And then delete this except that one. Put a piece here. And remember the weird linking problem. I'm gonna put, I want to put a piece into this switch. There we go. That was weird. And now, for at least four right now, I'm gonna connect these two pieces. So I have three tracks as of now. So I can come four, five, six, seven, and this will be eight, and the other side will be nine. I think it's a good amount. To double check this, I'm gonna see how many actual rolling stock we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can probably lump them into better groups like, oh, here's for logs, either car. And because of that, and uh, you can't really see on rails extended, but it, this is already taking up a lot of space. So I am going to mitigate this by only limiting it to seven, not nine. Now in this regard, obviously I can't have switches just here on the end. So when you find your exterior track, you want to connect it or like place an extra switch just to make sure the angles are all the same. Now I think uh, I'm going to keep this one in place so it acts like a connecting, another connecting piece to enter and or leave the yard. Actually no, I am not going to do that. And if I do decide to do it eventually, yeah, so be it. The limiting factor for the yard is the shortest track. So from here, I'm going to go, uh, I'm thinking 120. Actually, screw it, we'll do 130. It's, taking a, it's going to be taking a, a decent amount of space, but that is the plan. Yeah, that actually, this, uh, this will actually work pretty well. I'm just constantly double checking my, um, my design to make sure I have it correct. So we have... What is it? We have seven, so we need one, two, three, and then the stub switch. There we are. Okay, and I actually messed up. Okay, so I keep running into a problem now. The question is, how do I actually fix it? I think it's the stub switch. Yeah. This is a problem I haven't had before. Now I do have it. How do I actually fix it? Seems like to me that the stub switch is basically just three switches on one. So it should be the same radius turnout. Because of this, I am going to use a regular switch, one that's not glitchy, one that works, and use it to actually get the angle and the placement. From here, I'm deleting the switch and placing back my three way stub. And boom, now we know it is true, it is follows the same angles as our regular switch. From here, I can place them. Oh! That is a problem. It is not the same angle, or at least the switches are not placing that way. That was that is weird. What? Okay, I am actually gonna take a screenshot of this and report it as a bug. How weird? How how weird? All right, so it's not gonna be exact anymore, um, and that's that's fine. So now we can replace the switches like normal. That was weird. That was really weird. Now it makes it. Oh god! Now it makes you wonder. So is it just the is it just the right one or is it the left one too? Yeah, the left. Oh god. Okay. Uh oh, that is a problem. So this may not work. At least the way we want it to. I'm trying to get creative. There is a way, there there is a way to fix it. There is a way to fix it. I'm convinced. So this is. Fine, I'm gonna say. At least I think it is. 
Now I'm going to place switches like normal. From here I'm going to place our sub switch normally. Okay. Let's see if I can actually connect it. Let me fix this. You know what guys, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to see if I can figure this out. Okay. So, I finally figured out the problem and I was able to fix it. It's kind of a, not say convoluted answer, but it requires a lot. So, the switch will place in the direction you're looking. So watch. Okay. Now I'm going to keep the same switch and just place it this way. Crazy. Should be this, right? Everything's lined up, but it's not because the angle is messed up somehow. So we can't place a straight piece here to connect. We can't make it go left because then the angle will be all weird. Oh, case in point. Whatever the case. Oh, no. My point being, so it's, we can't trust the right side. The left side's been fine, but we can't trust the right side. So to help do this, we're gonna place a, oh, a right facing switch like normal. Okay, and it should be able to connect everything. From here, we're gonna add a crossover, delete that switch and, re and replace it with a stub switch. Now everything is in line. Now you can reconnect to the middle and to the left. That should be fine. So we can get rid of these two and place two extra switches. Okay, now the angles should be correct. And I can prove this circle mode zero and we'll just draw a straight piece out and then we'll see if it lines up with the middle piece over here now it does this is the center of the hill is on it so if i connect it boom straight piece so i can go from here switch to switch and if i do circle mode they should be in line i can just do it to all these switches and so let's do it real quickly one side done now this I left this in pur on purpose because what the heck is going on? This is where we can see that splines are directional. If I do from let's say the switch to over here, it will do this weird kink thing. It's because the spline prefers to be made this way. Ta-da! Immediately fix the problem. So again, it's the same thing on this side, so I'm going to build from here over this way. And I believe the reason for it is, like, th the horizontal distance was shorter than the longer distance. So if I do start from the shorter side and make a long curve, it kind of freaks out with the calculation. But here we are, here she is. Here is the classification yard for um, our hump tracks. Now, looking on rows extended again, I'm trying to think, okay, great. Hump yard classifications done. What else? Well, I need to connect my tracks that will like lead in and out of this yard. Well, how do I do that? I'm actually gonna break and replace the switch, which means I have to replace this segment. Well, why? I guessed. Well, because unfortunately, um, it will kind of mess up if I don't. Same thing over here, um, I did want to add, we're not going to do the same thing and then put a just completely separate track, but I am going to put a switch connection farther up. So we're, we're, it might be, may be redundant, but I'm going to do this. Oh, that actually probably work out really nicely. I'm thinking though, just putting like, this is the case, I just might do this. It may not be perfect, but, oh, it's definitely not perfect. I'm just gonna do this and connect the switches like so. Ta da! It's not the end of the world. But that way, it gives us a an extra bypass if I needed to go somewhere or do something else. 
All right. So again, now we have to do the hump. Okay, um, we are running out of distance before we actually have the curve, so we need to do this now. Hump yards will never, or at least to what I have seen, be on a curve. You won't have a curved grade down. It's always going to be straight. This set, I am making, uh, I'm going to say the hump here, but I can't just do like a short little 10%. Okay, that and we're good. It's like, well, I would love to do that. No. We need to make it at least somewhat tangible. And so we're going to go, we'll do nine meters out. This way the curve is a little bit smoother. And then we're going to use stone wall. And we're going to go maybe 16 meters up. And this should, probably will be it, honestly. And I'm going to flatten out. So we did nine meters to flatten. So we're going to do, or to go up. And we're going to do the same thing here. Nine meters to flatten out. This way we're giving the biggest little kick that we can. Oh, this is gonna look so cool, guys. Beautiful, beautiful. How lucky we are to have that, um, I wanna say that switch in place, that three place. Three way, three way. Now here, 10%, just we can have a little bit of, of a plateau, some kind of buffer before the actual hump. Now, this can, this can vary. If you need a bigger hill, because you might have longer tracks, this one isn't super long, so I'm not expecting, um, too much like rolling resistance. I think it'll just kind of go and we can stop it manually. Here what we can do is we can actually make a curve and a grade. So I am gonna again stop real quickly. Check on roads extended right now. And we are gonna build the surrounding tracks that you connect up to it. Which means I'm gonna go all the way back here and look for one second. Yes. So a few minutes ago I placed that switch there temporarily in case I need to curve. But I'm seeing now that I can just kind of get away with doing a straight piece out like so. I'm thinking about doing a 2%. Let's go 9 meters out. And we're going to do 2% down. So right here they're starting, they're going to connect into each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and curve this. Maybe about, oh god. Um, yeah, I'm about to actually go bigger. Because I want to make sure it's tangent or um, parallel with it. Maybe. That looks pretty good. I'm actually going to go to fill here because I don't think we need a giant stone wall. So now you can kind of see the actual hump of it take place. But I'm actually not that big of a fan of 2% like this. I actually think 3 would be better. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to start the curve now, like how it is. So we're going to go to 3. We'll do 10 meters down this time. And we'll do a, another connecting piece. So, something looks off. We're um, going to straighten this back out and then curve it. It just looks weird. I'm just going to keep curving it until we um, start getting somewhere good. Yeah, this way we don't have to stay as much like we're spending as much time on I want to say the ground or above the ground yes and I think 3% will actually allow us to kind of control our speed a little bit more because we can use more gravity to help slow us down and make sure we're not over um, not over straining the hump we only want to send one car down at a time from here it's gonna curve over to the right so we're keeping this so it can line up here I'm thinking okay well if this is the case then how can I get you know a track lined up here so now that these two tracks are kind of in line with each other, let's see, I'm gonna build out from maybe this one and see where this lines up. Okay, so I just took that moment to look real quickly. And I like the idea of right, getting another mainline spacing, but I'm not sure actually. So I'm gonna place, I'm gonna get rid of one. I'm actually gonna put it here, just what to two, put it there, wrong side. Okay, now I'm gonna drag a piece out from here, hopefully. I'm gonna see where this lines up at. Oh, just look at that. I, di I did not plan that at all. It kinda just worked out. Oh, wait, I already did that. Ha! Nice. I'm a smart kid. I'm a smart kid. 
So from here, this will be where the hump actually splits off, I think. Yes, and what we'll do, is we'll place the switch like so. So this track on the right can go to our connecting area, and then now the, let's watch it go to the yard. Okay, what else do we need? Do I need anything else? No, in terms of connections, I do not. So this will just be it for now. If I need to add a switch later, I will add a switch later. You know what? No. Sometimes I don't like, you know, that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect this all the way over there. We're going to pray that it doesn't clip the hump line. Okay, beautiful. That way we just have some, like, one nice giant curve. I'm actually going to try to do the same thing here. And we'll see what happens. This could either look really good or really, really bad. Okay, that looks pretty good, but now I kind of want to see what happens if I connect it from the 3% drop just directly. I actually like that kind of, I actually like that quite a lot. However, I am a little concerned. So I actually, I am going to change this. So I like to go down at 3%, but now I can try to find the radius that this is at. One thing they did in the patch was they changed how curve radius works so whatever the it is here at the end matches so maybe around 200 is actually what it needed to be so we're just gonna keep going down I think I can flatten out here and we're gonna see what it takes as you get it down in line I guess you need to keep it down for a little bit I say a little bit as in like a little bit I know it looks a little wonky I get it but um, I have a reason for it. Yeah, like that just looks bad. So what can I do? Well, now that I know, like my I kind of constrained um, or put a constraint on how like where it needs to grade. Replacing it should result in something a lot smoother. And there we go. We actually built the hump and subsequent hump yard. It looks rather good. And now we just kind of just finish building the, the actual rest of the yard. What's gonna happen on the left is we're gonna put storage and maintenance facilities, and then we're gonna just have connecting tracks. We're not gonna do really anything else, and we're gonna put a roundhouse. But I can also kind of make the yard a little bit smaller so it's not as, you know, spacious. I'll say. And also, let's face it. I will be I will be putting trees back in, and I did test it. The trees will be put back in, and they're gonna be all over the track. So if I can make it a little bit smaller, it's gonna help me out. So let's go back over here and finish it out. Well already everyone, unfortunately I think we are going to end it here for part 1. I'm going to link part 2 in the description below so you can just head over and continue it right up. And eventually you will see a director's cut of the full length video part 1 and 2 combined. And I, I just, I'm so excited, I still have so much more to show you guys. In part 2 we're going to continue with the roundhouse and we're just going to finish this yard out. If you made it this far I really do appreciate it. And since you're here why don't you consider liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. <sighs> well, all right. My name is Kist, and I thank you for watching. Bye-bye.